Hi everybody, it's Diane. I thought I was going to be making a video today to be posted tomorrow morning about getting started on my Halloween journals. I have my papers gathered, my printables um, from Seneca Pine Crafts, Something Wicked, which are really cool. And I have, I had a coffee dyeing session today and I know I just splurged recently on coffee dyed papers that someone else had done so I wouldn't have to but I needed to coffee dye my pattern papers for this journal so while I was at it I went ahead and did some other papers too so I thought that's what I was going to do work on this Halloween journal last night when I couldn't sleep I rubbed some copper colored um paint stuff on this embossed cover. This is a large book and these let me find one of my pages here. These pages from see how tiny they look? I mean this is a regular size. This is eight and a half by eleven sheet of paper that I, I trimmed the margin off it. But this is just a big book. So I'm gonna have let me see. My 12, pa 12 inch paper is going to be small in here too. So I'm going to have to come up with something because this is uh, seven and a half inches. So a 12 inch paper folded in half would only be six inches. So it's going to be short. So I'm going to have to like patch something together to make the covers for my signatures. Look at that really cool spine. I wasn't sure if I was going to use the spine because it's not that big, but I really like that embossed spine. My my hands have been stained with inks and sprays from doing my mixed media pages, and now they're stained with coffee. Uh, it's only one and a half inches, so we'll see. And I will be making two, so I have this other black book cover that I just, it's just a plain black, and I just put some copper paint on it and this one is seven inches so it's not as tall and it's just a little bit narrower so anyway but instead of doing this right now I might do a stash history instead because I got these bottle caps at the flea market today and I put this video up today. You're going to see this video that I'm making right now, tomorrow. Today's Labor Day, Monday. So I thought I should... I have a, a bunch of these sets of these milk caps ready to go in my shop. Um, I'm hoping to put them in tomorrow. But I thought it would be fun if I did a video of some ways you can use these caps tomorrow if I put that up and then and then put the the listing up that would be fun so that's what I'm gonna do I'm gonna try to anyway now these caps are smaller than the ones I got a year I think it was two years ago when I got my other bags of milk bottle caps these are one and a half inches these came out, These were, there were some loose ones in my bag. So these are one and a quarter inches. So it looks a lot smaller, and I guess a quarter of an inch makes a difference on a circle. It makes a big difference. So this is what they look like when you take them out of this waxed, um, whatever, this is what fits on the bottle. And then the, the dairy would put their logo thing inside it. So, anyway. I'm going to have sets of 10 bottle caps. Um, by far, the majority of bottle caps were these green ones. So there will be five green ones and then five assorted ones in the kits. So let's just play. I don't really know what I'm going to do with them. I did copy dye some index cards, so I'm going to start with them. 
just going to do a collage and I'm going to take them out of their little casing and just use them as an embellishment. You might want to use these like on the front of a journal cover so I will leave them in the casing when I sell them. So I have this gingham, red gingham. And that would go well with this red bottle cap. I think this is the kind of fabric that doesn't like to tear. Let's see. Oh, nope, this is doing well. This is like the salvage edge, but I like the way that looks there. It's a little too tall. The other day, yesterday when I was doing a video, I came across a vintage advertisement for something about cows, and I thought I'd save it for a farm journal, and I just went to see if it was still on that table, because I thought it would be fun to put it on here. But apparently I already moved it into the other room where my files of um, journal collection things are. So we'll just go with this for now. Now I want some paper. I'm getting my box of collage, ouch, collage stuff. Ow, I just hit my head on the corner of the table over there, my temple. Ow, okay, sorry about that. Boy, I'm not prepared, am I? This stuff is usually, this this envelope is usually right here next to my, where I am right now, and I forgot I had moved it. So I'm just pulling out a variety of things from my little basket here of collage stuff. Hmm, I have some. All right. Doily here. Piece of ledger. Let's just start gluing and see how it goes.
So what are you doing for Labor Day, my American and Canadian friends? Do you have the day off? My daughter has to work. I'm not sure if my son has to work. Looking for my fabric tag. I've got stuff all over the place. But I'm just, I don't have any plans, so I was looking forward to a day to just be here without working and without taking care of grandkids. This is my only day this week. But I had to spend time coffee dyeing. And I did go to the flea market. I wasn't there very long because there wasn't that much to look at. Put this doily here. about using a piece of this just to provide a little contrast between the cap and the um, fabric. This actually came in one of the boxes of uh, vocabulary cards that I have. I got the French ones and the German ones at a flea market. And there were some of these craft colored cards that were cut to the same size as the flashcards in there. fresh piece of felt on this. There were also plain manila, like the white colored cards in those vocabulary boxes. I'm not sure what I'll do with them yet, but I saved them all. I will certainly do something. I'll probably stamp on them. So there's a little journaling card you can write on the back of that. Tuck this in a pocket somewhere. Okay, let's do something else. Let's take, I like this one with the, the buttermilk. And I only have a few of these, so I don't think any of these are in any of the kits. I think there were only five or six, and I kept them because it's got a lady churning the milk, churning the butter. Um, thought maybe I would punch something out with my two and a half inch punch and make something 
So I don't know. I'm going to audition some colors of paper to use. I like that one better. Might as well punch some more out. So this was, what did we say, one and a quarter. I have a punch that's one and three eighths. Which would give it just a tiny little frame. Not much. Not much of a little frame on there. What's this one? This one's one and a quarter. So those. That is the only size I have that would work for that. And I have this mulberry paper. Just because it's right here next to me. Just set it off center like that so it shows a little more. And then take a strip of this fabric. Just add this to a page or a pocket or something. <clears throat> Pardon me. do I have that I can decorate? I've got little tiny sacks. Oh, I've got this blue. Got a bunch of blue ones. And a craft. And a book page. I 
coffee dyed vellum. I don't know how people do the coffee dyed vellum bags without having them stick together like that. If anybody knows, please tell me. Because I, I don't do them because that kept happening. And some of them got ruined. But I like the look of coffee dyed vellum. So I thought this blue one would be cute here. I just wonder what it would look like flattened. I don't think it flattens enough. Not with the cap in it anyway. Because I love that checkerboard pattern on it. might do something with that but I don't know what but for now let's see I have this one that's chocolate milk I think that would look good on the craft and let's put this orange one on the book page This one's eggnog. Now what? Looking to see what else I have that I can add to these. I've got these cute mason jars. Tickets, I think. Little tags. I'm cute on that. We've got these round tags. See, I'm totally going on the fly with this. I have no plans. Um, I've got orange tickets. I have to use one of these, I think. There. Got a red ticket. Got a vintage brown ticket. these. These I got from Twins for Me Too. These are from the school district and they're tickets for school lunch from, I don't know the date, but it's from her area, Tillamook County. I think she's in Oregon. What's her name? Twins for Me Too. Christy. Christy Biggs. So I had ordered these from her and with the milk ticket, don't you think I should use one of these school lunch tickets? I'll switch the wait. Switch the colors. Where'd this one go? Where'd my chocolate milk go? Well, I'll, I'll 
find it. But for now, I'll just grab this one. Okay, so got those. Now what? These are just little cardstock shapes. Um, I don't think I cut these with my Cricut. I must have bought these probably on clearance at Hobby Lobby. I don't like any of these colors with that one. So I'll find something else for that. this green. There's red and green on that label. Or on the milk cap, I mean. Okay. What is missing here? What do I need? Mm, lace. I need some lace. Just grab some, we'll see. This is my little scrap bucket of lace, but I brought over some of my cards of lace in case I don't find what I want here. That's a pretty one. put on an old t-shirt today and I didn't put an apron on when I coffee dyed. I always put an apron on when I coffee dye, but thank goodness I had an old t-shirt on because it is stained now. Still wearing it because I'm not going anywhere today, so I'm dressed like a slob today. Chocolate milk. I used to get chocolate milk at school. I grew up on a farm. We didn't really, by the time I arrived, I don't know if you'd really call it a working farm. We did have cows, but I think, I don't remember having cows in our barn, but my grandfather had cows, and so my dad was always there helping him milk, and we had hay in our field and stored hay in our barn and it was like a joint effort between my grandpa and my dad but they both had jobs too it wasn't a farm that would that was self-sufficient uh anyway we didn't have homogenized milk we had fresh raw milk from the cows and so i did not like the homogen the pasteurized milk from school I wasn't much of a milk drinker anyway, but of course I had to drink milk at home. But at school I was allowed, my mother let me get chocolate milk because I wasn't used to the pasteurized milk. 
And even after we didn't have cows anymore, when we were teens, my brothers would just walk up the hill toward the to the neighbor's house that still had their cows, and they would carry our metal milk pail up there and buy some milk, come home with a can of milk. They had to do that several times a week because there were six of us kids. And that wasn't pasteurized either. Christy has uh, a YouTube channel but I don't think she has an Etsy store, but she advertised on her YouTube channel that she had these tickets. And then you would go, you would email her, I think it was, and then she would invoice you, and that's how that works. So I can't give you a link to her Etsy shop because she doesn't have one. But I do enjoy her channel. She has some really fun videos. I like that. I probably should have inked around the bag. Let's do that for this one. Now I need a piece of lace for this one. I feel like it needs a, a little something else too. It's just a digital printout. It says Heiser Pharmacy on it. But <clears throat> I don't need it to say Heiser Pharmacy. I'll just, I like the way that looks there. So <clears throat> we'll use that. It reminds me, <clears throat> I've got to get my vintage poison warning labels out and get some in the shop so you can use them in your Halloween journals and so I can use them in mine.
I like my stash history videos to be quick and easy projects because I don't have a lot of time to spend on one embellishment, one pocket, one tag. And so for me, I need them to be quick and easy. And I like to be able to show you quick and easy things to do with your items too and still have them look nice. Someone may have sent this to me. I don't think... I have the um, die that makes these bags, but I don't think I made them out of book page. I think somebody sent this to me quite a while ago, and this was the last one that I have left, I think. I think the rain is over now, but the flea market, the Monday morning flea market is early. They set up, I think, they start setting up at 6 o'clock, some of them. Some of them are still arriving when I get there. Um, and then they're done. They're pretty much done by noon, I think. I'm never there that late, so I don't know exactly what time they start packing up, but by the time the rain was pretty much cleared up, I guess, they're done. So I was I was quite disappointed that it was a rainy day because it should have been a really big flea market today, and it was not. I have found some really cool stuff on the holiday weekend flea markets like Labor Day, Memorial Day. But on the other hand, I don't want to bring too much more stuff home with me. The bottle caps are, are fine because that's a you know a rare find in going in the uh, two or three years I've been going to flea markets three years this is only the second time I have found a batch of bottle caps like that I've seen some bottle caps on people's tables but they're selling them individually or for little groups for more money, it's not worth it to me because I want to be able to make a profit on them. So, so that anyway, that's a rare find, and it's something that I can just prep to put in the shop really quickly and keep some for myself and use them. So that was a good find. I don't want to bring home too much other stuff, the stuff that takes a lot of work and effort. But I am making big progress on getting things put in my shop and out of my house. This is the last day for the Labor Day sale on Etsy too. 20% off everything in my shop if you spend $20. Alright, so we have three of these little sacks. Oh, here's the other one. Do I want to take the time to do this one or do one other, do something else? I'll do something else and if I have time I'll come back to this, but I'll definitely will make this. If I don't have time to do it on camera, I'll do it off camera and I'll show it to you. I'll just set this aside. Um, so I think
think maybe I'll put something on here. This is one of my old ones, one of the bigger ones. Maybe some rickrack on this. This will be quick and simple. Don't need to add much to this one. I believe I got these burlap covered tags at either Michael's or Hobby Lobby. I think it was Michael's and they're actually for displaying earrings like if you're selling them because they have the holes punched in them but you, you can see a little bit on the front where the holes are but they were on clearance and I thought they were cute. So I grabbed a pack of them. Cheesecloth. I haven't used cheesecloth in a while. Where's my cheesecloth? Just enough, just enough extra oomph there. strip of muslin might be cute but I'm gonna put a piece of this seam binding in there for now already. Did you ever notice when you have a day that you think is free and clear and you can get a lot of stuff, how fast it slips away from you? These, these are the ones I had so many of. I had to remove the green rim around it, but I can add some green rickrack to it. This 
is a vintage rickrack. You see the texture in that rickrack? It's pretty cool. Just ignore the coffee and the glue on my hands. <sighs> Getting close to an hour here. I wonder if I have any green rickrack. Green or yellow? I have yellow. Maybe, or I mean, seam binding. Maybe I should use yellow since I have the green rickrack on there. Tags. I'm going to put a little hole in here. I can add a jump ring to it and I can hang this from something. I'll put my seam binding back up here on the shelf that's over my head. I can still get to there to put a jump ring there. I'm not sure. It might be too far from the rim to put a jump ring there. I might have to... Let me see if... One of these works. It's a bulb pin.
maybe I'll try to go to the barns this weekend because I'm not sure, but maybe the vendors there um, go to places on Labor Day weekend and come home with lots more stuff. So maybe I'll go see if there's anything new at the barns this weekend. Okay, uh, I've got about eight minutes if I want this to last for an hour. I don't usually go for an hour, but I can. This is a larger sack and a smaller tag that I'm using. So I'll have to come up with something here. I can use a little scrap of this gingham again. This is going to look like a Christmas tag. Or a sack. Got some this merchandise bag that might be cute on it. less Christmassy too. Of course it is eggnog. Maybe I should use this in a Christmas journal. It's probably a good idea. Maybe that's why it's red and green because it's eggnog. So we're making a variety of items in this Dasha Street episode. Concentrating on milk cap, vintage milk caps, but also we're using some sacks, some tags, tickets. So usually when I do a, a scrapistry, no, stashistry episode or scrapistry, I use multiple items from stashes or scraps, which is a good thing. We want to use our stuff, right? I don't think that's quite done. Because I think I need to add a little piece of lace. Now it's done. So let's quickly review what we did in this Stashistry episode. Sorry about all the glue I have all over the place. I didn't do anything with these, although these would be really cute with a milk 